Well, in her first live interview on British television, Satora Yusufi joins us now from Denver in Colorado. And Satora, we appreciate you spending time with us this morning. Um, first, I wonder if, you know, in your own words, you can describe the man to whom you were married, who went on to carry out this absolutely shocking act of mass murder. Um, you had experience of his violence, didn't you? Yes, I did. And, you know, what was he like when you were with him for the short period of time that you were married to him? In the beginning, he was a very thoughtful, charming, funny being. Um, after we got married, after about a month, I started see, seeing his other side, his violent side, his disturbed side. He actually attacked you once when you were asleep, didn't he? Yes, he did. When you heard what had happened, what was your immediate reaction? My immediate reaction was being an empath. I felt for the people that suffered and for their families. The, I felt really sorry. I felt horrible. And I couldn't believe it at first, but then knowing that it was Omar and, and processing what happened, I got memories and flashbacks of him when he was violent to me. There were lots of questions, Tora, about the motivation for why he did this. And questions um, came up in the immediate aftermath about um, his own sexuality uh, and the fact that he had actually visited this nightclub before, the Pulse nightclub, that he may have been using gay dating apps. Did you have any evidence of that when you were married to him? Well, you know, he was my first actual relationship with another man, so I didn't have much of a reference to compare. But the reason why I was even drawn to him in the first place was because he was able to hold very thoughtful and very detail-oriented conversations as a female would. And he felt very friendly and, and comfortable. And this was before our marriage. After our marriage, um, you know, I saw flamboyant sides of him. He would randomly start skipping, you know, as we were walking somewhere. And then, but when he would get mad and he would get in his violent state, he would express his resentment towards homosexuality. And at that time, I obviously wasn't putting two and two together, but from what I saw, what happened, and all the stories that I've read, it makes sense in my heart and my mind. You're suggesting that he could have been perhaps a repressed homosexual himself, railing perhaps against his father, who we know clearly uh, had a pretty strong view about that as part of his Muslim faith. Right. Right. Tell us about um, his connection, if any, with radical Islamism. Um, you know, he expressed in those phone calls, we're going to hear more of them, uh, an allegiance to ISIS. Was there any evidence that he had uh, extreme views when you were with him? None at all, actually. Um, he was beginning his uh, practicing his faith more when we had gotten together. He was, but that was a form of straightening out his life from the previous nightlife um, scene he was in. He was beginning to practice and follow and um, attending mosques once in a while. But there was no evidence or anything that I could relate that uh, there was about radical Islamism or extremism that he was into. Final question, Satora, and thank you again for joining us. But your family basically effected an, uh, an intervention and got you out of that marriage and away from him and cut off all dealings with him. Do you feel lucky now that you were able to get away from this guy? Yes. I, I feel very blessed and very protected and guided, you know. 
Well, listen, it's, uh, it must be absolutely awful to wake up one day and discover a man you were married to could commit such a mm. heinous crime. We appreciate you coming on the show and giving us an insight into his personality and character. Obviously, we can't ask him these questions because he's dead too, but we do appreciate you joining us, yeah. and thank you very much. Thank you.